we are going to see how to do mental math for comparing fractions the first one is pretty easy when the denominators are the same we call these fractions as like fractions then we know that the fraction with a smaller numerator is the smaller fraction that means 2 over 7 is smaller than 3 over 7 which is smaller than 5 over 7 but what happens when the denominators are different and the numerators are the same? Let's look at this example. 2 over 5, 2 over 9 and 2 over 15. Suppose we have a pizza and if we make 5 equal parts of the pizza and eat 2, would we eat more or if we make 9 equal parts and we eat 2, we would eat more? When you make 5 parts, of that pizza the parts would be bigger than the parts you get when you make nine parts that means you will eat more pizza when you eat two parts out of five that means two over five is bigger than two over nine which is bigger than two over fifteen typically when we have fractions where the denominators are not the same and the numerators are not the same either what we do is we calculate the LCM, we make the denominators the same and then we compare. But sometimes it is easier to make the numerators the same. Consider this example 1 over 3 and 4 over 13. One way is to calculate the LCM of 3 and 13. But in this case, the easier way is to make the numerators the same. That means make both the numerators as 4. Then my fractions look like 4 over 12 and 4 over 13. What I have done here? I have multiplied the numerator and the denominator of the first fraction by 4. Once I have 4 over 12 and 4 over 13, since the numerators are the same, it is easy to compare and I know that 4 over 12 is bigger than 4 over 13. That means 1 over 3 is bigger than 4 over 13. The key points to remember here is that when the numerator is bigger, the fraction is bigger. And when the denominator is smaller, the fraction is bigger. If you understand this, then it is easy to compare fractions mentally. When we don't have the same numerators or the same denominators, then we can use this following method, which is called as think as percentages. That means we look at the fraction and think of that fraction as a percentage. Let's take an example, 4 over 7 and 5 over 13. Now, if you look at 4 over 7, the denominator is 7. Half of 7 is 3.5. So if my numerator was 3.5, the fraction would have been exactly 50%. But here the numerator is bigger than 3.5. That means 4 over 7 is bigger than 50%. The second fraction, 5 over 13. In that fraction, the denominator is 13. Half of 13 is 6.5. So if my numerator was 6.5, this fraction would have been exactly 50%. But the numerator is smaller than 6.5. That means this fraction is smaller than 50%. So I have written the percentages here. The first one is bigger than 50% and the second one is smaller than 50%. That means 4 over 7 is bigger than 5 over 13. Let's take another example. 2 over 5, 15 over 29 and 6 over 21. If you look at 15 over 29, this is almost 50%. Not exactly 50%, but you can see that this fraction is almost 50%. Now look at 2 over 5. 2 over 5 is same as 4 over 10. And 4 over 10 means 40%. So the first one is 40%. The second one is almost 50%. The third one is 6 over 21. 
we know that 7 3s are 21. So, if my numerator was 7, this fraction would have been almost 33%. It would have been like one third. That means almost 33%. But the numerator is smaller than 7. That means this fraction is smaller than 33%. Now, when I know the percentages of these fractions, it is very easy to order these fractions. So, I know that 6 over 21 is smaller than 2 over 5, which is smaller than 15 over 29. Now, sometimes what happens, just thinking in terms of percentages does not help. For those cases, here is another method. I call this method as check the percentage change. Now consider these two fractions 3 over 5 and 6 over 10. If you look at the numerators 3 and 6, you can see that the numerator is doubled. That means the change from 3 to 6 is 100%. Now let's consider the denominators. The change from 5 to 10 is also 100%. 5 is doubled to get 10. That means the percent change in the numerator as well as in the denominator is the same. Therefore, these two fractions are equivalent fractions. I have taken this simple example so that you understand what I mean by the percent change. We are going to check the percent change in the numerator and the percent change in the denominator. Let's consider another example. 6 over 13 and 9 over 19. If you look at these two fractions, both the fractions are closer to 50%. So the previous method of thinking in terms of percentages does not help here. That's why we will think of the percentage change. Let's look at the numerators, 6 and 9. So, if you look at the increase in the numerator from 6 to 9, the increase in the numerator is 50%. 6 plus 3 equals 9. That means the numerator has increased by 50%. Let's look at the denominator. The first one is 13. If 13 increases by 50%, Half of 13 is 6.5. So 13 plus 6.5 gives me 19.5. So if the denominator increases by 50%, the second denominator would be 19.5. But in this case, it is 19. That means the increase in the denominator is less than 50%. Right? The increase in the numerator is exactly 50%. The increase in the denominator is less than 50%. And we know that when the denominator gets smaller, the fraction gets bigger. Now we know that the increase in the denominator is smaller than the increase in the numerator. That means the denominator is smaller. That means the second fraction is bigger. That means 9 over 19 is bigger than 6 over 13. You can practice this method. If you can do this comfortably, then go ahead. If not, we always have the regular method where you can calculate the LCM of 13 and 19 and compare accordingly.